Warning, this video may contain some material that many parents may find unsuitable for children under the age of 14. Hey, this is Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and this week is part one of a little bit different kind of build than I normally do. This is a 124 scale Jada Toys GTX. And I have a Warhammer 40K tank and a regular tank from Tamiya. The goal is, is to try to combine bits and pieces from everything and make some sort of a post-apocalyptic, uh, futuristic type vehicle. Um, hence the 40k stuff. So, start by taking it all apart. So I got quite the collection here. There was a lot more pieces than I uh, anticipated, uh, which is nice because it gives you some room for customization. So I really don't have a plan. I don't have anything in my in my mind. Um, I go through each tree of parts from each kit just to see what I have and what I can possibly use. And you know, the more you do this, things just kind of speak to you and say, "Hey, use me." <laughs> and I start going through and. I have, you know, the tank from the um, Warhammer stuff has a lot more parts that I end up using than the actual battle tank from World War II, uh, which I believe is what it is. I'm not really a tank guy. So I'm going to scuff up the entire body and all the parts just so I have a surface to um, eventually paint, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to strip this. So... They have some cannons that mount on a turret, and I'm going to use those. They kind of snap together, and then it sits in a, a, a base that allows it to sit into another base, which makes it pretty much rotate and do whatever. So I wanted something that kind of moved on this, and I, and I initially was going to go crazy with this, but I'm, I still think I'm going crazy, but I'm trying to keep everything in check and when you start building these kinds of things it's very easy to get down a rabbit hole of just adding too much stuff so you know i'm going to assemble this the way the instructions actual say actually say you end up snapping a few pieces together and then you um, glue a couple pieces on and in the end this is kind of what you get now the the belt feed for the actual weapons is um sits down lower so i'm gonna have to modify some stuff to get that to work i found a i guess you'd call it a some spikes i'm gonna mount on the front fascia panel um i kind of angle them up a little bit because i'm gonna add another piece later on that angles down so again i'm going through i'm looking for pieces that might fit look good um i'm not worried about color or anything right now because i'm going to prime the whole thing so this is that piece that that turret sits in and the problem i'm i guess it's sort of a problem it's a it's a thick piece of plastic the roof is curved so trying to get it to fit um really well is is not not an easy task plus there's a big hole in it that technically needs to be cut into the actual body so I'm going to put it in, get a decent spot, and I'm going to draw a little mark there. And I got this Milwaukee hole saw kit. Um, I actually bought it at Home Depot. And I'm going to use that to drill a hole. And it looks really, really big now that I'm looking at it, but it does fit. <laughs> um, I'll get a little bit of an overhang. I probably could have gone a little bit less, but three quarters wouldn't have been big enough. So uh, that's what I had, so that's what I used. So after I glue that on, I'll end up hiding anything that sticks out off the sides um, with some styrene. Plus, it helps hide the curvature of the roof where the actual piece doesn't really bend very well. 
that's kind of what I'm doing here is I'm just going to kind of actually no, I lied. Um, the windshield was was one of the things that I kind of hemmed and hawed about. wasn't sure how to do it, what I wanted to do. Um, right there, I'm making sure I can take the hood off and on so I can paint it without blocking it in with any styrene. So I was going to do like a little guard, but I decided to take some 1 16th round styrene tubing and use that to kind of make a grill. And I'm going to glue that pretty much all the way down the entire windshield and I'll add something to that later the, the thing with these builds is you know if you get a little stash of styrene you, you build things up in layers and as you start adding things adding the first thing is the toughest after that um, it just seems to get easier the more you add on you can kind of see you see it come together um, and a lot of stuff I'll do really is non I could say non-functional, I guess. I'm not really sure what it would be or what purpose it serves. Um, I just put stuff on, and if it looks good, I do it. Um, it's it's real tough to try to come up with, you know, um, a lot of different things for these. So I'm going to put some strips of styrene on the back, and what it's going to do is create two two sections where I can add some, some bits and pieces. And what I initially want to do is oh, um, I'm taking the tracks. They have plastic tracks that come with the Warhammer kit. So I'm cutting those up, and I'm using those as like um, almost like a, a, a stepping spot on the roof with some abrasive area, so that way you're not going to slip and fall. But what I want to do is I want to have the, the turret be fed with or powered by some wires and I kind of needed something for the wires to go into so after I put these steps on I'm going to steal a couple pieces for the wheels off of the um, Tamiya tank and eventually what I'll do is take some wires and run those into that from the turret into these little pieces you're going to see me mount here in a second and again I'm just using regular super glue uh, I'm not going crazy in uh, the keen eye, will notice that those strips that I put don't sit flush because the roof line really curves towards the back window. And that actually works out to my advantage because I'm going to put a screen back there and it slides right underneath perfectly. So these are the little, little round. They're actually just axle something or others for the tank. I'm not even sure what they are. But they were round and they have a hole in it and it worked out really well. Again, I'm just kind of gluing stuff on just to see how it's going to look. So I made a scoop. There's a metal hatch that came, again, with the, I pretty much pilfered the, the 40K stuff. And I made a little um, grabber-style hood. Figured I'd kind of throw it back a little bit and keep the Mopar roots. So this is fiberglass mesh. Um, it's mesh you use if you're going to do fiberglassing on a car. Um, that's Usually I can't use it because it's too big and bulky and hard to work with on a 164 scale. However, on a 124 scale, it actually looks and works perfectly. So I'm going to put that in and slide it underneath those little tabs I made. Instead of trying to force those down, which I could have done. But it worked out really well. And then I just kind of press it in so it's got a little bit of a concave. And then I'm just going to take a piece of uh, 116 square styrene and tubing and just uh put it on the back there it'll pretty much end where the look it'll look like it's going to be something metal that holds the mesh down uh, before it gets to the trunk and i put a liberal amount of crazy glue or super glue whatever you want to call it everywhere um, seems to work out pretty good i don't have any bonding issues and since i have the mesh out i'm going to put a piece of mesh over the front window just a little added extra protection for the driver. And at this point, you can kind of kind of see where I'm going with this, even though I probably can't. Um, it's it's just one of those things that as you add stuff, you you know you, you'll know at this point when enough's enough. And um, it, it's builds like this are all subjective. What I think looks good, somebody else may think it may think it looks like like crap, but um, the kit for Warhammer came with extra two sets of guns, a big set and a little gun, a uh, little set. And I'm sure there's specific names. I'm sure the Warhammer guys are going to bust my balls, but it is what it is. 
And normally they would go together like the other one did, because um, you could use either or. But <clears throat> I'm using a piece of, I believe that's 3 16 aluminum tubing. Fits in the holes perfectly. So I'm going to use that to kind of attach the two um, cannons together. You'll see in a second. It actually fits in perfectly. Um, so yeah, right there. So I'm going to mount them on each side of the scoop. And then I'm going to wrap that rod that I just put in, the tubing, with some um, hobby store chain. I don't know what size it is, to be honest with you. But again, it's one of those things that kind of looks okay on the 164th. Perfect on this scale. So after adding some bits and rear windows and uh, panels to like hide if there was holes and so on and so forth, you're trying to patch rust, um, you'd use a steel plate or anything like that. The doors, I used those same tank tracks to run those down the side, just added some texture and some layers. There's the piece I added to the front to go underneath to kind of give it a double, double prong look. And there's the chain on the two, two, uh, futuristic style cannons at that point really just a matter of hitting it with some Steinal res get everything the same color as always hey shout out to my patreon members they they help feed this addiction and without them uh, this channel wouldn't be possible so thank you and result part two is coming up soon this is literally as i'm doing this and recording this this is the exact phase it's in i was just excited to get it out this is what it looks like Stay tuned for part two. I'll catch you on the next one.